Ah, okay, we have buffer question number two. So let's get reading. So we've got a buffer solution is prepared um, and that contains 2.02 times 10 to the minus two moles of propanoic acid and uh, 1.96 times 10 to the minus two moles of sodium propanoic. And that's in two dm cubed of solution. The Ka of propanoic acid at 25 degrees is that over there. Um, and what you've got to do is calculate the pH of the buffer at 25 degrees C. And secondly, um, then a 5 cm cube sample of some hydrochloric acid is added to the buffer and we've got to calculate a brand new pH for that buffer solution. Okay, so jot all this stuff down, have a quick go, and then we'll go through the answers in a few seconds. Righto, it is solution time. So, when you were reading through this, you must have picked up on a few things, right? This time, what have we got in our mixture? Well, we've got propanoic acid, which is a weak acid. But then the other species that was in there was not sodium hydroxide, was not potassium hydroxide, wasn't anything like that, wasn't a strong base. In fact, what we had was a salt of uh, the conjugate base, right? And when we have that, that there should trigger in your mind that hit this is method number two of creating a buffer solution, okay? So here's what we'll do. Let's create a diagram to see uh, what's really going on. So we've got our beaker. Now in our beaker, we've got propanoic acid, which is CH3, CH2, COOH. And we've also got sodium propanoic, which is the same thing, but the acidic hydrogen has been replaced with uh, sodium, Na. Now that there is an ionic species, so what's going to happen when you pop it into solution, it's going to ionize. And so it will actually exist as that there with a negative charge and Na with a positive charge. Now if we look a bit more closely at this, what you'll notice is we've got weak acid here, that's your propanoic acid, and then because this is now ionized, look at what this is. This here is your conjugate base. And remember, whenever you have weak acid, and its conjugate base, you have just created a buffer solution, right? So right here, we've got a buffer. Let's write down some details though. So we've got propanoic acid, so that's that, that and COOH. And we've also got its conjugate base, so that's that, CH2COO minus. And what we've been given are some moles, right? We've got some moles of each of these species. So 2.42 times 10 to the minus two moles of this, and we've also been given uh, 1.96 times 10 to the minus two moles uh, for your conjugate base. Now, to solve any buffer question, what do we need to use? Well, we need to use a Ka expression and we've got that down the bottom here. So let's just color that in. Here's our Ka expression, right? Um, and we're gonna use that in a second, but the important thing to do before that is in order to use the Ka expression, we've got to get concentrations. Currently, we only have moles, right? So to turn this into a concentration, we need to divide by volume. That's just a simple rearrangement of that formula down there. So to get concentration, that's going to be moles over volume. But do remember your volume needs to be in dm cubed. And luckily, in this question, we've been given the volume and it's in dm cubed. So that's great news. We've got two dm cubed. So then we can just put two dm cubed on the bottom of this and two dm cubed on the bottom of this. So let's now turn these into concentrations. So we've got 2.42 uh, times 10 to the minus 2 and we're dividing that by 2. So that comes out as 0 0.0121 moles per dm cubed. That there is the concentration of that. And then we go across to our conjugate base. We'll do the same thing there. So 1.96 um, times 10 to the minus 2, divide that by 2, and so we've got uh, 0 0.0098 moles per dm cubed. And there we go. Now we've got concentrations, we can use our Ka expression. So let's go ahead and do that. So our Ka expression, let's do this over here. So we'll say Ka, which we were given as well, 1.35. So 1.35 times 10 to the minus five um, is equal to, and then we want to find H plus. We've got the concentration of our conjugate base now, that's 0 
eight over the concentration of the acid, which is 0 0.0121. Should put this in round brackets now as well. There we go. And now we can just rearrange this to find what H plus is, right? So multiply across by the 0 0.0121 and then divide by 0 0.0098. So we'll have 1.35 times 10 to the minus five times by 0 0.0121 equals that divided by 0 0.0098. And so that should come out as a H plus concentration of 1.67 uh, times 10 to the minus five. And that's our H plus concentration. And then to turn that into a pH, what do we do? We want a minus log that value there and when you do minus log it i think your ph comes out as let's double check that now minus log answer 4.7 um, 4.78 is what we'll say so there we go so now we've got the ph of our buffer uh that's 4.78 but now what happens afterwards now look what it says we're told here that a bit of hcl is dropped in um, we're told the volume of it, it's 5 cm cubed, so a very, very small amount. Um, and this is its concentration, right? So what we should do is work out, well, how many moles of HCl was added. So let's do that over here. So what are we doing? Into here, we're popping in a bit of HCl. And uh, that was 5 cm cubed. And that was 0 0.1 mole per cm cubed. So let's turn that into moles. How do we do that again? Use this formula down here, concentration times volume, to make sure your volume is in dm cubed. So that's going to be 5 divided by 1,000 to turn it into dm cubed, then multiply it by 0 0.1. And so that comes out as um, 5 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. Okay, so that there's how many moles of HCl we're adding in. Now let's think, we need to think about this very, very carefully. When we're adding in HCl, when it goes into solution there, what's it going to do? It's also going to ionize. And it's actually acting as a source of H+. And now, remember what we've got inside our solution. We've got weak acid and we've got its conjugate base. And if we add H+, what is it going to react with? It's going to react with the conjugate base. And you see that. So you've got H+, it can react with the conjugate base to create more of your weak acid okay that is so important right so you must remember that so what is happening well if that HCl is reacting with your conjugate base it means the moles of it is now going to decrease okay so this here is going to go down in value okay whereas on the other side because when those two combine it creates your propanoic acid this overall is going to go up. So I'm going to put here up. Okay. Now, uh, let's not be fooled here. Here is the number of moles of each of the species that we had originally. Okay. So I've colored those in now in yellow. So that is what we had. So what we'll need to do is add on 5 times 10 to the minus 4 moles um, for the weak acid. But we would need to decrease. 5 times 10 to the minus 4 moles for our conjugate base. Okay, so remember this, these two values here are the ones that we are using because that was the moles, right? Do not go and use these. These are concentrations. Don't do that. It's an easy mistake to make. Okay, so let's work out now uh, how many moles of weak acid we would have after this addition of um, HCl. So we would need to do 2.42 times 10 to the minus 2, add on. 5 times 10 to the minus 4. And so that ends up as 0 0.0247. Remember, that's now moles. And then on the other side, we need to do 1.96 times 10 to the minus 2. Take away this time 5 times 10 to the minus 4. And that comes out as 0 0.0191. And again, that's moles. Okay, perfect. So we've got moles there, we've got moles there. This is great. And now, remember, we'll need to go back to our Ka expression to then work out the pH. You must remember, though, that we needed concentrations. And right now, we've got moles, not concentrations. But what we can do is look back our old working. What did we do? Well, we divided by the volume, right, 2 dm cubed, to turn them into concentrations. Now, one thing you must realise is this. 
we just added some volume to this. We've added 5 cm cubed of HCl. And so the total volume of this has actually increased. It's not 2 dm cubed anymore, it's a bit more. But because 5 cm cubed is only a really, really small amount, in comparison to this, in your spec, what they want you to do is ignore it, right? And treat it as if the volume is still at 2 dm cubed. So I'm just going to divide this by 2 dm cubed and this as well by 2 dm cubed. So now let's get some new concentrations. So we'll have 0 0.0247 divided by 2 and that gives me 0 0.01235 moles dm to the minus 3. So we've got a brand new concentration there for my uh, weak acid. Let's do the same on the other side, 0 0.0191 divided by 2. That comes out as 9 times, oh, sorry, 9.55 times 10 to the minus 3, and that's moles per dm cubed. And there we go, so we've got that 2. Now we're going to use our Ka expression, plug that all in to get H+, plus. then we can get a new pH, right? So let's start plugging this in. So Ka, that's 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5, is equal to our H plus times by our concentration now of our conjugate uh, base is 9.55 times 10 to the minus 3, all over 0 0.01235. That there was our weak acid. Rearrange this all, right? So times that across, so 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5, multiply that by 0 0.01235 but then divide it by 9.55 times 10 to the minus three. And that there comes out as a H plus concentration of 1.75 times 10 to the minus five. And I remember if we wanna turn that into a pH, we then need to minus log this answer over here. So minus log of this number here. So minus log answer and that comes out as uh, 4.76 there we go and that's our new pH there so as you can see what's happened if you look here real closely the pH before was 4.78 and after you dropped in a little bit of HCl which is a strong acid you can see the pH has actually got more acidic but very very slightly okay because that's what a buffer does a buffer is supposed to minimize any large changes in pH and so you can see it's done so quite effectively in this question. And so there we go, that's that buffer question done. I hope you've understood uh, how to solve uh, problems like that and um, there's more acids and bases questions coming very very soon. So stay tuned and I hope to catch you in another one of those.